Welcome and hello everyone. My name is Crystal Holland and I am a member of the marketing team at Harvard Extension School. We're happy that you've chosen to join us today to learn more about the online experience at Harvard Extension School. We know that this is a time of great uncertainty around the world. It has forced us all to move many aspects of our lives online and it has compelled us to rethink how we work, engage, learn, and thrive in our everyday lives. In higher education in particular, online learning initiatives are accelerating at a rapid clip as people look for ways to retool and reskill to meet the demands of an evolving economy. But for us at Harvard Extension, online education is nothing new. Embracing change is a core aspect of our identity. We've been evolving and adapting to meet the needs of our students, adult part-time learners for over 100 years. Our students come to Harvard Extension School for the challenging of building new knowledge that helps them transform their lives. They might also do this through a degree, a certificate, or a single course. And today we have three speakers who will give you a sense of what it's like to be in an online course. We have Karina Lynn Murphy, who is a member of our teaching and learning team, Joan Feinberg, who teaches online classes at Harvard Extension, and Michael Fabiano, who is a former student and president of the Alumni Association. Before I turn it over to my colleague, I want to take a moment to mention that this webinar is being recorded and will be shared with all registrants. Also, I wanted to mention about our QA section at the end of this presentation. We've had plenty of people submit questions ahead of time, but because we can't get to them all in, in the time that we have today, we have pulled the most commonly questions asked for you. And now I'll turn it over to Karina. Thank you, Crystal. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Karina Lynn Murphy. I am the manager of faculty development at the Department of Teaching and Learning here. And ultimately, what that means is that our department is responsible for and our goal is to provide instructors with the tools and the support that they need to make student learning meaningful um, for our students at Harvard Extension School and to keep online learning personal and connected, which is what we feel like is truly valuable to the online learning experience. Uh, so as Crystal said, we've been doing remote learning for a really long time. Um, how long, you may ask, uh, I was, VHS tapes were involved. So this was many, many decades ago when remote learning meant mailing of uh, tapes to people. Um, and to give you context for where we are in online learning now, we've actually been using Zoom um, school-wide to teach our web conference classes uh, for four years, which doesn't seem like a really big uh, amount of time, but it's, it's, it's something that has been, has been done way before many other schools. Uh, and so what that really means is that online learning is embedded in the tapestry of the Harvard Extension School. School. To us, good teaching means good teaching online. Uh, and our department and the Harvard Extension School as a whole is continually investing in the technology to enhance learning experiences for our students. So you'll see in this picture here, um, this is a example of a classroom that we have at Harvard Extension School. Not for this academic year, we are fully online. Um, but in, in typical cases, you would be, uh, many, many of our classes, you'd be able to attend a class on Harvard's campus, or you would be uh, able to to attend class as a live online student or uh, as an asynchronous student watching uh, the lectures later. And I'll, I'll talk, talk about that a little bit later. Um, so we have teams dedicated to class video and to make sure that that's high quality and it's available and streamable to all of our students. Uh, we have videographers, we have producers who make sure that these videos are not just simple recordings of lectures, but videos that actually engage our students who are watching later. Uh, we have teams that are dedicated to bringing students, online students' faces and voices live into the classroom. It's two-way, it's not one-way. You're not only taking in the lecture, even if you are an online student, you can contribute to the lecture and be heard. Uh, we invest in tools to maximize asynchronous connection and networking. We know that learning happens beyond the two hours that you spend in class every week. Um, there's a lot of learning that happens between it and we fully know that and invest in the tools to make that learning happen and go smoothly. Uh, and specifically, there, are, there have been some questions about what tools do we use. We, we use Zoom for a lot of our live classes, um, but we also have our own system built by our developers for live streaming classes and for watching the recordings later. Uh, we also continually invest in our instructors. And what that means is that we are dedicated to help our instructors teach online, to teach specifically Harvard Extension School students, um, and to provide the training and 
what we call teach partnerships. Um, so instructors feel confident to teach online and that they continue to improve on their classes between semesters. And so um, when uh, Crystal and Leslie asked uh, me to kind of talk about the online learning experience, I thought about the student experience and how we defined it. And I defined them as two pillars. Uh, one is connection and community, which I know is so necessary for learning. Um, balance with the flexibility that specifically Harvard Extension School students need to make that learning happen. Uh, these are the uh, essential pillars that I call of, of, our, of our mission for, for our teaching. And for us, connection and community means that students in class, even if you are a, an online student, that you know your classmates and you work with your other classmates and the instructor knows you who you are and that you work with the instructor. Uh, and flexibility for us means many different things. It means that our courses are delivered in a way that respects the full lives and preferences that our part-time adult students have. Uh, and that means for our online courses, there are uh, different ways that you can attend class. And so if you ever look at our, uh, our course catalog, you'll see a lot of different formats in um, formats that our classes can be in. And they, they, they pretty much run the whole gamut. You, it can be live, online, Zoom classes that you take over Zoom, um, and they can be ones where you can take, you can come to Harvard's campus and be a student here, uh, or ones that you can watch your class recording later uh, and engage with the class asynchronously. These are all different ways that you can engage with our classes, and this is also something that you can choose between weeks, right, because we know your lives change week in and week out, and these are all um, options that, these are all the choices that you can make between between the weeks. So I will talk about this later in our in our Q&A as well. Uh, and this is consistent throughout Harvard Extension School. We have many different programs, certificates and degrees. Uh, but this mission of creating flexibility and meaningful learning in our classes through different formats, through different tools, through good teaching is consistent throughout our entire school. Um, and the last thing I wanted to mention is that for us, we want this to be Harvard. Harvard Extension School is Harvard, and that means your classes are rigorous. You are going to be engaging with your instructors and your classmates quite a bit. Um, and I can think of no better person to talk about uh, teaching at Harvard uh, than Joan Feinberg, who I will pass this off to. Thanks so much, Karina. Um, well, I'm Joan Feinberg, and I'm very pleased to be here today with you. I love teaching at the Harvard Extension School. I teach courses on academic writing and business writing, and my goal is to set up a classroom where my students can thrive. Well, the most distinctive characteristic of Harvard Extension is the high quality of education students get. Our courses are rigorous. I mean, this is Harvard, it's serious. Our courses aren't package courses that anybody can come in at the last minute and teach. They're demanding college courses with high standards that are developed by instructors who are experts in their fields. My own experience is in publishing. I was president of a college textbook company and we had a very successful list of books on writing. So what's been exciting for me coming here is I can take all that I know from publishing and use it to help develop my course. And all the extension school teachers bring this deep knowledge of their fields to the courses they teach. The extension school brings that um, attention to quality to the way they do online courses also. As Karina told you, the extension school has been doing online courses for a long time. This spring wasn't a major disruption for us. Many of us had already been teaching online. We didn't have to reinvent ourselves. We know how to do this. The way the courses are taught here, I'd be hard pressed to come up with major differences between in-person classes and online classes. We really try to make our courses a full enriching experience for students. The main thing the Extension School figured out early on is that if you want online education to work, you have to give support to students and to instructors. It isn't easy to go from teaching in person to teaching online, but as Karina was telling you, the Extension School has a program for training instructors who are new to teaching online. And then ongoing uh, training with people like Karina to help us all improve as teachers. And similarly, the Extension School has online support for students and they're an amazing group. They can make any student successful at being 
an online student. Every semester, there's usually one or two students in my class who are in a little mini panic about being an online student, and I send them to online support, and they become completely functional online students. Well, not only are instructors committed to making sure their content meets the high standards of Harvard in, in these courses, we're all also committed to teaching. I want my class to be a student-centered experience. I mean, of course I'm concerned and take seriously what I'm teaching, but I'm more interested in what my students are learning. I want them to learn something, to know they've learned it, and then to be able to take it with them through the rest of their lives. So I want to echo, too, what Karina said about community. At the end of every semester, I ask my students, like, what was the most valuable thing about the course? And every semester, they say it's the connection with me and with the other students in the class. They see the classroom as a community. I give them lots of opportunities to interact, and they take full advantage of them. They may be sitting alone at a screen, but we are connected as a class. So let me help you imagine what an extension school class looks like. I mean, in my Zoom classroom, we're all talking to each other. I do some lectures, but the class is mostly discussion. So I make clear to students that they can talk too. I have 15 to 18 students in my class, so we can, um, I can see everybody on the screen. They can see me and the students can see each other, which is really important. So everyone talks. Nobody just sits there staring at the screen. The classroom is a place for them to try out ideas, to test out their thinking on papers they're working on, to get answers to the questions they have about assignments or concepts. And there's constant communication. Sometimes we're talking as a whole class, as a big group. Other times I break students into small groups so they can talk to each other. Students are writing in chat if they have ideas they want to throw into the conversation. There's a lot going on. And it's a writing class, so we talk a lot about writing. And I put copies of students' papers up on the screen sometimes that we can all talk about, talk about what's working, what isn't working. Sometimes the student whose paper it is will tell us why she made certain choices. The online environment is a really, uh, really useful for these kinds of writing workshops. And students often then follow up on the conversations outside of class on social media. Another way students connect with each other in my classes is um, I have them do peer reviews of each other's papers. They'll do reviews of drafts of student papers. And when I ask them, okay, what do you learn from reviewing other papers? Again, they always say, I learn about my own writing. They see their own mistakes in other students' papers, and it really helps them to revise. But even more important, these collaborative sorts of things help them see that they're not alone, that Everybody has the same struggles and challenges. I also have a great deal of one-on-one -on -one contact with my students. I try to be accessible so I can be there to help them when they need it. I have three individual conferences a semester with them, usually to talk about their papers and how to revise them. Students can make additional appointments if they need more help. They ask me questions during breaks. They ask me questions um, at the end of class. I make myself very available on email, and I really try to get back to them quickly. If a student has a problem, I really want to help solve it so they can get on with their work. Then I get emails at all hours, at 4 a.m. for some students, at 4 p.m. for others. I think by the end of the semester, I really know my students well. What makes those connections even more valuable, though, is the amazing students at the Extension School. In every class, we have students from all over the country and all over the world. You can only get that mix of students in online classes. This spring, when the um, pandemic hit, I gave my students some time in class to talk about how their lives had changed. So we heard about quarantines in Pakistan, in Thailand, in Hungary, as well as across the United States. But that's the way we talk about every topic. We hear from students from diverse locations and diverse backgrounds on everything, and it's cool. Finally, what's so compelling for me about teaching online at the Extension School is that I see my students in the middle of their lives. I see them at work, where they're taking a break to take my class. I see them at home, where they're in their study, or in the kitchen, or 
maybe in the attic. Um, I see them in airports. I see them in hotel rooms. Sometimes there's a baby crying in the background or a toddler comes running in or a dog comes bounding in wanting to be petted or taken out. There'll be an occasional spouse or a roommate or a coworker like fleetingly appearing in the background. That is the backdrop of our classes. I'm so impressed by the commitment of our students in the middle of these lives. They make classes work for them. It's inspiring. Well, it's very good to talk to you, and I hope to see you sometime soon in one of my classes. And now uh, I'm delighted to introduce former Extension student, Michael Fabiano, who expertly juggled all of these priorities. Thank you, Joan. And uh, welcome to everybody who joined the call today. Uh, again, I'm Michael Fabiano, uh, president of the Harvard Extension School Alumni Association. Um, and again, thank you today for coming on to learn more about the Harvard Extension experience. Um, I hope you took one really important item from Joan just now. We have great professors, uh, highly competent, engaged, enthusiastic, and available to students at all hours. Um, and this is why I'm excited to talk about the program because uh, it's meant so much to me in my career. Um, it's really important to note that if you get through a master's program uh, or certificate program, uh, you're part of the Harvard community and you have access to resources like any other alumni of the college. Um, and when I talk about Harvard Extension, I do also like to talk about the students that one meets online and in person. Um, they tend to have similar characteristics. Uh, they tend to be dynamic, uh, tenacious, uh, tend to be uh, folks of varying backgrounds and having multiple degrees in many cases. Uh, they're driven, they're talented, they're curious, uh, they're seeking an environment uh, that is open and supportive of intellectual freedom. And this really is a global program um, with a really robust multimedia technology platform. And I can't emphasize that enough, that the live online platform um, is really unlike any other. And Harvard's been doing this for many, many years. I know we've all been exposed to uh, the recent uh, transition to online learning at all levels, but we're really good at this. Um, and my best classes were the live classes with students from around the world. Um, this opens up all sorts of other opportunities for guest speakers to join from around the world. Um, I also had the opportunity to take a lot of electives in the other schools. Uh, I took classes in the law school, um, the IT management program, the business school, and journalism. And as Joan said, many students are juggling multiple obligations during this time um, if they're pursuing a degree or a certificate. And I think this is the hallmark of our program, and it's what's different from other Harvard schools. You have to juggle competing family job and other commitments to, uh, to really make your degree happen. And as a former student, um, I've been exactly where you are. I started taking classes and um, eventually uh, applied for the master's program um, with a full schedule, a job, kids, and um, it, it's tough, but if you're committed to it, you can do it. And I did this, one other time too, um, I went through two master's programs. Um, I also went through an executive MBA program at Columbia. And all of this was really because um, the job market and industry continues to change seemingly faster than ever. And with the recent pandemic, it's probably going to happen again. Uh, people are working longer. Uh, people uh, are requiring new skills. And all of this is, uh, and making these kinds of programs really important. If you're worried about doing these online classes and uh, potentially on-campus classes uh, while having a job and kids and perhaps soccer commitments and things like that, um, I can assure you that you can do it. Uh, if you set your mind to it, you can do it. Um, and you can build long-term endearing relationships uh, online 
uh, and on campus. Um, it's just different and it's all what you make of it. I will say the Harvard degree has been a key credential and essential to my current position. Uh, today I'm managing um, the content business at the Associated Press, which is a global media and technology organization. We have 15,000 customers worldwide and we reach 4 billion people daily. And it's a position that requires editorial business and technology in one's background. And my tr transition from 14 years in technology to now 12 years in media was challenging. And the Harvard degree was essential to that. Uh, the need to learn new skills isn't going to stop, it's accelerating. And what we say at Harvard Extension uh, is we can't stand still. Uh, it's precisely these kinds of programs that are going to train future workforces around the globe and enable um, a fundamental shift in your career or an enhancement to your career. And there's other byproducts. You can become a master at organizing your schedule. Um, I will say there are times when I even move meetings with my CEO to make sure I was at class. Uh, so you have to be a, an advocate for your time and just make it all work. And um, I think it does require some extraordinary support from families and uh, uh, perhaps colleagues. So you just have to let them know what you're doing. Um, but the experience will change you if you're open to it. Uh, Harvard changes us all and encourage us to create positive change in the world. And what's really important is you're developing into the kind of person, if you aren't already, that companies love to hire. Um, for those of you working and going to school while you're in this program, uh, you should be taking concepts that you learn into the workplace and showing the value of the program. And you're becoming the kind of people that companies want to hire. I can't impress on you that enough. And on the other side of this, uh, we welcome you all into the Harvard Alumni Association when you complete one of the programs. And Harvard offers a supportive global community wherever you go. Um, I was welcomed into the Harvard Club of New York and I go there frequently. And I have enormous support from career services and the community in general. So I look forward to seeing you if you join a Harvard community and uh, interacting with you in the coming years. And now I think we're going to move to a Q&A session. Hi, everyone, and welcome back. This is the QA section of the webinar. Um, I'm going to get started um, by reading the first question for you guys, and, Chris and Karina will answer it all for us. So the first question we have is, what are the most common course formats? Yes, thank you, Crystal. Um, so this is a question that has a long answer and a short answer, so I'll try to give the short one. Though, though it might turn long, um, is that you have a lot of different, there are a lot of different course formats at Harvard Extension. So as I said earlier, um, there are some courses that are fully synchronous, means you show up live uh, and, uh, every week and attend class, typically over Zoom. Uh, and then there are other classes where you can, there's more flexibility where you can attend class in person on Harvard's campus. Um, this is with the caveat that for this upcoming semester, spring 2021, uh, for this academic year, we are a fully online uh, school. And for the upcoming year, we're not sure yet, but uh, our hope is that we will be able to welcome students back to campus. Uh, but so for this, this other format, you can come on campus, you can also join class live uh, online, or you can attend class asynchronously. So we structure these course formats. When you sign up for a course, you're going to know what format it is. It's very clear. It's in the syllabus. It's in the catalog. Um, but we provide flexibility in what our courses look like because we fully know that our students' schedules and their needs need to be flexible, both in terms of the time that they can commit uh, to Harvard Extension and taking classes and when, uh, but also the, the style that they prefer for learning. Do they prefer uh, showing up in class live and interacting live, or do they prefer um, having the flexibility to attend class, not at the time that it's live, but at a later point? Um, so that's the long, short answer. <laughs> Thank you, Karina. Okay, so on to question number two. Um, and I think we'll have Michael kind of answer this question for us. Um, so are online classes as effective as traditional in-person classes? 
Uh, yeah, I think the answer to that is yes. Um, they can be more effective, especially if you're in a live online class with students from around the world. And it does depend on the type of class. Um, but I also think it's up to the student to uh, be engaged. And uh, I think that uh, when you're in an online class that's live and you have um, dynamic professors like you know we do at Harvard, and they are keeping the class moving, uh, I think they were actually um, more, uh, more pressure and more stress than just sitting in a classroom being talked to because uh, you can sit back in a class and be lectured to. But I think the online learning environment, if done right, and Harvard does it right, uh, keeps you really engaged um, throughout the class. And I think that's a more effective learning experience overall. I agree with you, Michael. Okay, so question three is, will in-person classes resume after the pandemic or will you switch to a mostly online format? And also, will degree programs still require on-campus courses to graduate or will that requirement change? And we'll pass this on to Karina. Yes, thank you. So this is, this is a really good question. Um, so we fully expect to offer on-campus courses again in the future when it is safe to do that do so um, so as far as timeline goes we're not sure but our hope is that we will do it the minute it is safe to do so uh, we are online as i said for the academic year of 2020 2020 to 2021 so so through spring 2021 um, and as a result the on-campus requirement for degree programs for this academic year can be fulfilled with live web conference classes so those are the classes that um, you should attendance is required, you show up live for X amount of hours every week. Uh, these courses uh, provide the real-time engagement with faculty and peers that meet the spirit of the on-campus requirement. Uh, and our intention is to move back to the on-campus requirement for when it is safe to do so for people to come here in Cambridge, uh, but stay tuned for, for those updates. Thank you, Karina. Um, on to question number four. Um, what are the benefits of completing on-campus required classes during a fall semester as opposed to the offered modified options, which we have weekend, summer, and modified times? And if Michael, if you want to take this one away. Sure. I mean, it's great to be on campus, whether it's during the full semester or weekends or summer. So I would recommend any of these. They're all great uh, options for students. Um, you know, if you're there during the full semester with all of the students that are, are there, you sort of get that sort of um, sense uh, about um, the entire school and um, you do feel like part of the community regardless of which one of these you choose. Um, the summer sessions could be more intense, uh, you know, so those could be more compressed. But uh, being on campus in general is just a wonderful experience. So I do think it's important to uh, work you know, this into your schedule to, do, to complete some uh, on-campus time there. And you just really feel like you're a part of the school. Thank you, Michael. And on to our fifth and final question um, for the webinar. On average, how many hours per week do extension students devote to coursework in class and out of class? And also, how many classes per term do extension students typically take? And this will be the last one for you, Michael. Okay. Yeah, well, I'll say it depends on how many classes you take. I was intent on uh, working full time and getting the program done over a two year period. So I tended to take a lot of classes during the week and I scheduled some of those after hours, some of those during lunchtime. Um, I was open um, with work about, you know, when I would be taking the classes. Um, and it also depends on the type of classes. It's like any other college program. Some classes require more work, more hours, uh, some uh, require less. So um, it's really uh, what's great about the program is that you can figure out how to uh, tailor your schedule uh, and continue working with the kinds of classes that, that, you, uh, that you choose. So, you know, some classes required a lot of work outside of the classroom. Um, some of them required group work. Um, some of them required research. Um, some of the journalism classes required me going out on the weekend um, and interviewing people. So 
Um, you know, again, I think it depends on the type of classes, but you can count on thinking about this as any graduate level program. It's graduate level coursework. Um, it's a very serious program and um, they're tough classes. And, um, you know, I think that uh, it's, it's, don't think of it as anything different than that. Thank you, Michael, and thank you, Karina, for answering those questions. Um, so if you guys still have more questions, please feel free to contact our enrollment services team for specific questions about tuition, financial aid, course options. Their contact information is here for you on the screen for you to see. Um, and I just wanna remind everyone that registration for spring will open November 9th and the semester will begin January 25th. And we hope to virtually see you all then. Um, so thank you again for joining us today. And just to remember that this webinar is being recorded and we will share the recording with you all in the future. And thank you for joining us all and have a great rest of your day.